Do 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 do. Let's go. Hey, 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 there we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Sunless Citadel, a Torchbearer RPG actual play. Uh, I am your host and your GM, Eric uh, Eric Vulgaris. All you're on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. And uh, you know, we got we got our we got our ragtag group of I was gonna say friends. We're getting close to friends, but not after last session. <laughs> no, there's some. Um, now it's more like a Jerry Springer episode. You know, so we got some like horrible family drama uh, unfolding. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, let's go around and do a quick little recap of who we are, who we're playing today, um, and then maybe jump into a prologue, do beliefs and stuff. Oh, and uh, there's going to be a change from our normal um, play. Uh, for a while, I've been at, I've been telling our group to hide our goals. Um, I was given that instruction by Sean Nittner, who's a big Torchbearer fan, who was having the game run by one of the designers of this game. Obviously, he's not Tor, but uh, Luke Crane um, of Burning Wheel fame and everything. Like, he was helped co-design this game. Um, so, when Sean told me that when Luke was GMing for him, that he hid the goals, I thought that was a good best practice. Um, after watching uh, Adam Kobol's, uh, you know, Skinny Ghosts, on Twitter, um, his his office hour show about how to not hide goals and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm willing to try it. And just personally, as a player, I know I do once upon a game. I do a bunch of random shit um, here online. Um, and one of my biggest things is that if you want to make something happen, make it be obvious about it. Um, so that fits more in line with my ethos anyways. Maybe it's just that Torchbearer sort of has that old school... Uh, charm where you're maybe maybe it was it's supposed to like not do that but I don't know we're anyways as an experiment um, we're gonna run the game uh, with goals in the open this time so yeah let's go around and let's go do uh, intro so let's go right around the table uh, in normal order so starting with uh, fake Alex thanks Eric yes hi I am Alex um, you can find me fake underscore Alex underscore blue on twitch and Twitter um, and I am playing Grice Lastlight, the uh, a cleric from a walled village called Heartwood, but better known as the Enclave of the World Tree. And he is a sap-soaked creature man. Yes. Son of a creature man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. Paulo? Okay, hi everyone. I am a um, bar gamer, um, aka Paolo, to be found uh, online on Twitch, Twitter, uh, YouTube as Barona Gamer as well. And uh, I am playing Deckard, the dwarven adventurer. The well, how should we call him? Prone to prone to action over uh, consideration, I'd say. The uh, the noir detective out to get the job done. Where uh, you know these. These guys aren't doing it. Smash cut to you cutting off the goblin's hand and throwing in the fire. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. 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 Cool. Yep. <laughs> Alain? Yeah, hi. Um, my name is uh, Alain. I go by Jexus or Jexus1985. You can find me here and over at one of the gamers' channel. I sometimes stream, but not often, so don't bother. Uh, I play uh, Gilly Darkstalker, a burglar halfling who cooks... And there's other miscellaneous stuff. Uh, and he, I consider him to be the only reasonable person in, in this party. <laughs> Is that a belief that you're going to have? No, that's just my own belief. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it'd be a good one. I might that's change a, no, it. No, that's just a solid player belief. Yeah. No offense, guys. That's just how I think of <laughs> Everyone, you're all insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. And uh, Martin? Uh, hi, I'm, um, I'm Marcin. I go by Madendel, and I can, you can find me sometimes uh, on Deckard's channel or here. Um, I play Arendelle, the um, elf ranger. I, I think I agree with Alain that Gilly is probably the best uh, or the character most to be trusted in this group. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I try to defend the party, and they kill me. They, they're tr they try to kill me for it. What? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't well, we'll didn't try to kill you. It's that was in a way. That's innocent, just casualty. Yeah. Well, well okay. here's the thing, though. Like, we can get into why and how the details are based on whoever's doing the next step, the prologue. Mm 
Because <laughs> um, after the prologue, then we'll review our belief instincts and write our new goals. So that that would be the things for to do today. So who wants to do the prologue? Yeah. Me. Awesome. Cool. And okay. just for for those at home, the TV audience, um, the prologue is an important part of tw- uh, Twitch Bearer of Torch Bearer. Um, fundamentally, it's it's built into the game so that a character who's hurt uh, can actually recover uh, in the game because this game doesn't have hit points; it actually just has conditions. Um, but at the same time. Um, it also has this thing called nature, uh, which is kind of like your your cultural baggage. Your your uh, it's a double edged sword, right? It's the things that you're good at that you brought with it, that brought with from your heritage, um, as well as how you can change your heritage. Um, and part of that is uh, you can like use it to become really good at something real quick or something like that. But when you do that, you tax your nature and you become less like your your elven stock and and more like a a greedy dungeon exploring selfish sob. Um, or vice versa, <laughs> or or you become too much of of an elf, and then you want to go like, ah, peace, guys. Uh, those Westlands, the Undying Lands. Yeah, uh, I got my tickets. I'll be out of here, right? Um, that sort of dichotomy um, shows up. So, anyways, uh, you, you have a chance to recover that. So that's kind of how uh, that kind of works. So, anyways, let's go to the prologue. Okay, so we've the party found itself in the Goblin Room where we killed. A lot of things by now. We killed goblins. We killed a, um, a giant bugbear. We had some goblins left. Um, and But before we talked to them, we went into a different room um, with a low humming noise. And in that room, we found a strange violet light emanating from the floor, I think. Yeah. Or, um, and I think there technically was... speaking, it was lilac. Oh, lilac? Oh, well, it was purplish. I'm being an asshole, sorry. <laughs> well, it's fine. You would know, world tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of trees, we found some saplings uh, potted there, um, which uh, seemed uh, interesting. Um, Grice tried, uh, thought they were, I don't know, did you say, did you call them blasphemous, evil? At, at yeah, least they were, they needed to be much. burnt. Yeah. They needed to be destroyed. Um, well, Arendelle was afraid that something might happen. We've we've had our experiences of with goblins being, you know, um, um, trimmed and parts of them being thrown in fires and things escalating. So Arendelle tried to stop Grice by, uh, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, rugby or American football move. And he managed to tackle Grice and. Um, he, so we didn't burn those trees. In the meantime, Gilly open managed to drag away heroically on his own a uh, small chest. Um, we opened the chest and uh, there was uh, lots of treasure inside. Good, well done, Gilly. Uh, it was also trapped, which we managed to avoid. Yeah, we did. Um, so, and then we remembered, hey, we have two goblins that we could inter- interrogate. <laughs> <laughs> So we um, we talked to them and we uh, interrogate. I we, uh, okay, I guess you work for like the the U.S. government. What they mean by interrogate? As we cut well, go back over to Byronic, like beating the crap out of them. And <laughs> oh, I don't think we tortured them per se, if I remember correctly. We uh, we um, I think we yeah. The dwarf uh, remember cut off the hand and threw him in the fire and screamed, and that's how that people found. But you. it was one of those. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm well, pretty sure that's not interrogate. That's torture. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but it was, uh, that was not last session. So, well, but, thankfully, uh, thankfully, in the torchbearer universe, there's no such thing as the Geneva Convention. So I'm ahead. just setting up a long story where he can come back, call himself Luke, try to dethrone me, and then there's a big reveal. Mm. You know, the usual. Uh, something about that. That goblin is your son. Is that what you're? Are you insinuating that goblin's your son? <laughs> It, it, who knows? Oh god, you know, that's a pretty good goes... twist. That's a good twist to a failed role right there. <laughs> if, so, that continues, um, if this sort of yeah. behavior continues much further, we'll have to call it torture bearer. I just oh. want to say, oh. <laughs> Alex. I just want to say, I wrote down violet pulsing light. So, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Anyway, um, we um, uh. We uh, went up to the, the to the third door, which was um, locked from the other side. But in it, uh, from 
coming from that room, we heard uh, all kinds of burning noise, burning sounds, um, and there was a dragon inside. Um, I think Meepo was the one who uh, was talking to it. Well, that went really well. Um, he, uh, the dragon was kind of arrogant and didn't really want to go back with us and um, had made his uh, lair in his new cave. So then um, Arendelle cast um, a spell and uh, talked to the dragon and, um, well, offered him, uh, well, offered him a Meepo for some um, extra, I think, information or something. <laughs> was uh, not a good idea. Meepo tried to run away. Grice um, fearlessly uh, sprinted after him and managed to catch up with him. Um, then I think Deckard and Grice, or I'm not sure if it was Gilly. I believe we both tried to solve the problem here. Well, I think uh, some, some party members uh, kicked the goblins and Meepo in a... Your euphemisms. Uh, Your euphemisms, man. <laughs> that, that may Solve or may the not problem, me. as in like <laughs> we kick them down into a pit and make them fight to the death. <laughs> like that's, well, that's yeah. They, they, no, they, they you don't say that. You just said, "Don't worry, the puns will solve." Fear down, down. Like have fun, guys. In my uh, defense, in my defense, I thought there were spikes down there, so it's not as bad <laughs> as it. <was. laughs> oh, Arendelle realized that they might be of use, and that these weak, weak creatures were that it wasn't right just killing them like that because um, Deckard and Grice um, were moving to, uh, to just kill them outright. So Arendelle jumped in, trying to stop his party members. Wasn't really such a good move, I think. But he got hit by a rock by Grice. Uh, and um, Meepo and the goblins were killed anyway. And that's where we left off. Yeah. No, that, that's pretty much it. Um, the, your, there's a tenuous nature, uh, there's a tenuous balance going on about how the kobolds will view you, um, af especially <laughs> after this, plus the dragon. Um, there will, that would certainly be a conflict later on about getting your way, at, uh, get, maybe getting your way if you ever should encounter some more kobolds. But um, yeah, I want to hear what you guys want to do now. Um, once again, you know, you still got that hum from the floor. You got that dragon um, who's 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 curled up nice and cozy. Now, in that room. or do I do do a test for that? For what? A test for what? No, uh, do do I, so I, do oh I... no, there's no test. No, you get it. Oh, okay. Yep. Yay. Recover uh, either a uh, condition in recovery order. So um, once again, TV land uh, in Torchbearer, you don't have exper you don't have hit points. What you have are conditions. You have like hungry and thirsty. You have angry, tired, exhausted, sick, uh, injured. Um, and there's a particular order of how you can recover them. So if you're hungry and thirsty and angry, you must recover hungry and thirsty before you uh, recover angry, etc. Um, okay, so I recover hungry wrong. thirsty. I don't, I don't actually remember the order right now, but that's, generally that's just how it works. I think uh, when you so do a pull choose. So I have a question, Eric, because yeah. I can't see it at the moment. What turn are we on for the grind? You're right. Mm. I don't know why the turn order uh, disappeared. Um, how do you bring that back up in roll twenty? Click the uh, there's a little uh, twenty sided die on the left hand, like in the toolbar. I think that's the turn order. Thing. It's uh, the dice roller for me, but maybe for DM it's a different uh, option. There it is. No, it's it's not that you're right. Uh, it's actually the clock above the d twenty. Just so you know, in the future, no, we don't we don't have that. Oh. Um, and quick question, weren't we going to do uh, belief goals, instinct changes at yes. the start? That oh yeah, right. that's right. I keep forgetting that. I get so excited to play after the prologue. <laughs> Let's just jump in. That uh, Yeah, there's one more thing to do. So uh, also, TV, TV Land. Uh, Torchbearer is like any other Loot Crane game. Um, it's a burning wheel based game. or It's actually based off Mouse Guard. Um, your beliefs, your instincts, and goals is how you will get experience in this game. There's no such thing as experience in Torchbearer. Um, instead, what you can get are basically like belief points or karma points, if you're familiar sort of like with Shadowrun kind of stuff. Um, and there's two types of levels of points here. There's fate points and persona points. You gain experience when you earn those and then use them in your roles in play. So when you check off enough uh, certain threshold of fate points and persona points, when you return to town, that's how you level up. 
because uh, that shows that you've been fighting for your beliefs and you've learned some things and you maybe be accomplished some goals. So that's sort of how things work. Uh, you can change them uh, at the start of every session if you want. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and see what everyone's beliefs, instincts, and goals are. So let's just go around the table again. So, Alex. All right. Uh, Grice's belief is, since the day of my birth, my death began its walk. It is walking towards me without hurry. I do not fear to meet it. Grice's goal is Redwood, 2610. False plantings must be burned, the ashes scattered, and the earth salted. I will burn these unholy saplings in service of the world tree. And his instinct is, these non-believers need divinity they can touch. Always have a poultice ready for what ails them. Yes. Uh, so funny story. Uh, last night I was on Hyper RPG, and uh, I, I didn't. It didn't hit me right away. But um, I was. We were playing this game called like American Gladiator, uh, sort of like tabletop kind of game, uh, where like the audience can interact and like help us as players or punish us as players. Um, and during that, uh, Alex uh, gave me a potion, and it took me a little bit for me to realize what like it was actually Alex cuz he based off his quote on the game from his instinct. Uh and that's why I realized that after I finished drinking it I was like, "Oh, I that was Alex. He made a reference to our Torchbearer game." Oh my god, and so like I like I hollered out like, "Oh yeah, it also tastes like sap." Uh be only because it made me realize what this was and I want to shout out that I realized what was going on at the end there. Uh so anyways, awesome. Uh aside over. It's <laughs> good instincts, by the way. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yep. Deckard. Okay. Um, so Deckard has um, recently had a bit of a shift in the way he sees things. So his belief is now, my party members don't have what it takes to complete this mission. It's up to me and Bryce to drag them through this. Um, his, his goal uh, change now is, we got hit and hit hard. We need to return and regroup. I will convince this party to return to town so we can return all the stronger. Mm. And um, his instinct being the dark corners are filled with hidden dangers. Always check the dark corners for an ambush while adventuring. Ooh, that's good. I like that goal. <laughs> that's interesting. I was not expecting that. All right. Yeah. Gilly. Uh, Gilly's belief is uh, that no task is too daunting for a dapper halfling like myself. Um, my goal is we have taken too many risks. I will ensure that remaining goblins are pacified. And my instinct is when making camp, cheer up my fellow adventurers by cooking a hearty meal. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I think you, you and Grice, I think, have the same beliefs and instincts since the start of the game. As we started playing. About approximately, yeah. yeah, cool, yeah, definitely. Had we actually encountered that dragon, my belief would have changed from some things are too daunting for a dapper halfling like myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Grice, Grice is getting really low on nature, like my nature's been taxed quite heavily. So, I think if that changes in addition to swapping a trait, like I might change a belief as well. Yeah, so, we'll, see makes sense. we'll see. Cool, and what about Aaron Dahl? Yeah, my uh, belief uh, changed a bit after um, last week's uh, encounter with uh, some uh, party members and my goal as well. So my belief is now there are only two things I can truly trust right now, my own judgment and Gilly's cooking. Oh, yeah. And um, my goal is I need better equipment if I'm to adventure with these frenemies. First, I should get armor and, a bet and better weapons. Hmm. Oh, okay. and my instinct is uh, still, uh, I'm always in front protecting the weaker when in a fight. Yeah, that includes the other party members. Oh, it even includes Deckard. Hold up. Okay. What does that mean when we're, you know, attacking, like, goblins and they're nearly dead? Will you jump in front? <laughs> oh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My instinct does. I mean... <laughs> 
I mean, Grice was feeling really bad, bad about like injuring you, but yeah. like not jumping so, in front not of you. So something, that, like, yeah. <laughs> so something about Torchbearer that's important is that uh, it's kind of the onus is on the players to sort of like be like, oh, but hold on, GM, I have an instinct that does this. So, um, yeah, when that happens, it could be that you want to eat damage for that instinct for to trigger, right? Like that might be a thing. They're like, actually, no, sorry, Deckard's not going to do that. I jump in front. I'm going to take that, you know, or something. I'm going to make this test instead. Um, that could be possible. Um, anyways okay so we have some pretty uh, juxtaposing goals here uh, our session's begun what do you guys want to do we're, we're, we're in the um, the blood soaked uh, goblin hallway or trap <laughs> hallway I like to refer uh, to it as the kill zone the kill zone yeah the kill room that's pretty accurate so I, plastic like, hasn't been invented yet I don't I don't know about you guys, but I don't think the two goblins who were tied up um, in the pit with Meepo really pose much of a threat to us, but we do need to deal with them. What do you oh, reckon? Oh, are they still tied up? Yeah, I and they think that you're more vicious than goblins. All right, right so Gilly jumps down, takes the spear, and just stabs him to death. Jeez. Doesn't say anything, just jumps down. And stabs All right, him. then that's, that's, where we, yeah, that's where we start. We start with, like, just... You know the sound, we the the camera over uh, the group kind of recovering and stuff, and we just hear like the the sounds of a spear. And um, I think at the end, at the end of a massive battle, where you have yeah. the soldiers mm -hmm. killing off enemies. Mm -hmm. That's Deckard exactly what I think. Just you know, like pair looking a down, just let the kid go. Nice. And I think I think we see Grice like he's he's hunched over Arendelle, um, and he's got like a poultice up against his head and, and um, maybe you're regaining consciousness or whatever. Um, and you see Grice's <sighs> gaunt, distressed, sap-soaked, sweaty face leaning down on you. Uh, I'm so sorry. You, you got in the way. I didn't want to hurt you. Here, just quiet now. This'll, this'll help. <laughs> what kind of poultice are you... Uh... Uh, well, I'm applying an injured poultice, so it smells like um, it smells like moss, and this is very sort of chemically menthol uh, scent to it. Um, it's it's yeah, you don't don't want to let anyone near your nose, but applied to that bump on your head, it probably helps make things feel better. Okay, does it actually help do something against injured? Um, now. You can't make a roll to recover from injury except in camp. But if you have space in your inventory, you can consider Grice to have given you this poultice that will help you. It'll get, add a die to that recovery mm -hmm. roll. Um, yeah. If you accept it, right? Like, you might brush it aside and tell them to go um, leave or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll take it, but I'll... Um, I'll uh... I'll smell it a few times. Yeah, we'll, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I'll, I'm, I, uh, I, I keep carrying it. <laughs> at least. Right. It smells like it might run away. Otherwise, I'll never, I'll never truly understand the older races. Their ways are strange to me. Yeah. Ow. He looks, I think. Uh, yeah. He looks troubled, like he sees you like hurt and and aloof, and he's like, "I didn't, I didn't mean for this to happen." But doesn't say that. Yeah, I think uh, Arundel um, um, is. Um, I think Arundel understands that what happened, and um, um, it might have been. Uh, it, it wasn't just. Uh, just you know, Grice's fault or anything. It was also maybe not the best judgment of um, uh, of Arendel because he also had plans uh, for to well, you know, not necessarily keep me alive. So um, I think he uh, asks for a hand from uh, from Grice to uh, to get up. And and Grice gives offers a, a sweaty, sticky 
hands. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gross. Like I don't know. How you, he's covered. He's covered in sap. Like every every conceivable part of his body. Like his robes are drenched in it. So it gets everywhere. Um, but yeah, he's, he gives you a firm hand up back to your feet. Um, looks like yeah. Really tall. Thank, thanks. <laughs> I try to. Uh, I'll try to. Uh... Start uh, start climbing out of this. Uh... Oh, wait, that's gonna be a test, isn't it? Uh, well, I guess you know, Deckard's yeah. on top with a uh, with a rope, just helping everybody up. Uh, you know, yeah. sturdy dwarven, steady stock. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a generous guy here and let you guys you can pull them out. Hey. You guys have been you've been through enough right now. I'm more I'm more interested in what you guys are going to do. Um, I think and where you guys are going. I, I think when Gilly gets out of the gets out, gets out of the pit, he just sort of uh, grabs his stuff. It's like, right, now we go kill those other fucking goblins, and then we go get those kids, and then we go home. Because I'm fed up by you guys taking stupid risks, not listening to what I have to say. You're, you're being loud. You're being silly. You're being risky. We're going to deal with stuff consciously and smartly, and then we get out. Okay? Oh, hold on. You're saying let's not take any risk, and at the same time, let's go in there and fight a whole bunch of more people? No, 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 yes. no. Yes. We need to go back, regroup, rearm, and then go get them. I'm. I don't want to say it, but I think I agree with Dexter. I, 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 I'm not sure why or how this happened, but I think it might be an idea. I mean, look at look at me. It means I, you're learning. I mean, my, I'm, look, look at my look at my head. I'm I'm injured. I'm I'm tired. I just want to sit down, and then I want to before we start killing these goblins, we need some better stuff because all we have is crap right now. And look what's happening. What's happened so far? I could do with, I could do with seeing the sun, or moon, or whatever it is outside. I don't. I don't know where time, days, it feels like days, but uh, I don't like, I don't like turning my back on goblins in these tunnels. There can't be many of them left. Exactly. R round them up and then. What uh, about these dra this dragon then? I mean, we can't just leave that, leave that there, can we? It's locked in. Didn't as far as you know, he's fight. locked in. Yeah. It's good enough. <laughs> he might have been the dragon. The dragon might have been the one who locked it. Yeah. Well, Gilly uh, doesn't care. care. <laughs> we, don't know if there's the lock. we don't know if that's the only way, way into that room. You're right. You don't. So, if you recall. Here's the thing, then. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Here's the thing, then. How about we go and explore, see where those goblins are. Check out the situation, and whether we fight them or not, we then return up to get uh, resupplied. Yeah, you want to do that? I'd agree yes. to that. If we see a dragon, we run, though. Yeah. Uh, that is something I completely agree with. Okay. Really? No, that's, that's good. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, Let's then. Let's go and scout. So... Eric, just mm -hmm. for avoidance of doubt, we've untied the corpses of these goblins <laughs> in the bottom of the pit. They didn't, they didn't die fighting each other whilst also tied up. Like, if anyone comes and looks, that's not, that's not this fiction we're presenting. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that's, no that's CGM important. techniques, you're not... You'd be like, yeah. oh, you didn't untie them. No, no, we untied them. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're going to go into the sort of... The area where you heard sort of like the, the goblin colony would be essentially. Yep. Right? I think that's probably the best way of describing what this is. Um, similar to, once again, oh, okay, it's actually like Goblinville is probably the best way of describing it. All right. So this is what, um, this is, so you guys are just going to go approach the room. You're not going to be stealthy or anything. You're just going to go, right? No, no, I think, I think a little bit of scouting is called for here. That we just basically check out what is in there. Rather, we don't want to walk in there and have like 50 armored goblins go, aha! Okay, so then um, it sounds like you're scouting. Yeah. Once again, uh, if, you if you describe it being like, well, I think we're doing it, 
then you are the one doing it, unless you say in character, um, you know, Arendel, I think you should go check this out, or something like that, right? Um, so, yeah, this would be, uh, you know, a very simple test, uh, ob one. It, it already said it, already said it, Gilly. You did already Arendelle say has, it. A, has a good idea, though. But as a test, you know, as a test, folks can help, because this will count down to the grind, um, so all this stuff will happen, it's not a, well, wait, no, you're using, are you using your instinct? Um, huh. I guess I can count as an... But if you, remember, uh, when you use your instinct... And nobody can help. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. So having no, no, instincts I, I... that be like, always help, is, is like a good instinct for some people. But then again, if everybody has that instinct, though, it's sort of a tragedy of the commons, where like, nobody can do anything, all we can do is help each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's this tough balance between stuff. Anyways. Uh... No, I, I think it's going to be pure on scouting. Just the, um, I, I do, I'm not expecting ambushes right now. I just want to know who's left. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm always expecting ambushes, but. Mm -hmm. So who's helping, how, what, where, why? I'll help with scout. What you doing? Just be right there with you, scouting ahead, being silent, being quiet, making sure you don't step on rocks and twigs and, That's I don't perfect. know, mice, rats. So, technically, in the fiction, while I'm doing the scouting, you're basically doing the scouting, and I'm just sort of following along, going like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah I saw yeah, it. Yeah, but it's important, though, to Descartes, right? It's your idea, and you're, you are scouting, right? It's like, I'm, I'm the one scouting, obviously. The fact that I'm following the halfling is just, you know, it's, they're quicker. They, they scurry. <laughs> okay, in that case... Paolo, what, what, are the, what are the factors for... I mean, what are the suggested help for scout? Um, uh, Pathfinder, oh. I think? Or Dungeoneering is probably one. Uh, let me check. I'm um, oh, trying to find it. Chronal Scholar... Pathfinder um, and Hunter. Yeah. Oh, Pathfinder and Hunting. Thank you. There we go. Yes. Not this guy. So, yeah, I think Grice lights oh, a torch don't... and like watches you go ahead. Like that's. Yeah. <laughs> and Arendelle has um, has a different idea, so yeah. he's uh, not going to join you for the scouts. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. I might. He has an I... idea that he wants to do with uh, that he wants to look at with Grice yeah. after. Let me make a quick note here. Uh, I'm going to make a new skill tool. Like, you know how, um, Alex, you generously made this list of skills? Uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to make a quick... I'm going to add to that next time uh, with um, relevant help skills. Yeah, that's a good, good plan. Okay. Anyways. Well, that leaves uh, Scout like Bryce and Arendelle stay behind, right? Um, well, yeah, Gr right. Grice being not I'm helping, not. but said you would okay. you know, follow with a torch, right? Oh, are you following? Because I'll stay behind. I have the lantern, though, for, for uh, this test. I am, yeah, I'm hesitant to split the party as a player. Um, so, you know. Um, the thing is, I want, to do do I want to do something where we are before I actually, before I actually. All right, okay. So I think, I think Grice will say, go ahead, come, come and report back. You. Yeah. I'll stay with... Uh, my injured uh, comrade here. Right. What's his name? Grice, Grice says that, but he sounds suspicious. Like, he always sounds suspicious. Nice. Oh, let me bring it over. Right. Good. All right. You still got it. All right. We're doing it. We're doing it. Carefully, so you know, skill of, of detective work, trying to fit in again. Oh, yeah. Helped by Gilly. Yeah. So, um... The first thing you would definitely notice is the smell. Uh, the, the layer is thick with the filth of years of goblin life. Um, you, you peer through the door, maybe like through like the cracks of it or whatever, um, and you see a room that maybe what once was a cathedral. Um, scores, mm -hmm. you kind of like see scores of, um, what's the word? What's the word for things that hold uh, torches? walls and stuff sconces sconces yeah and like braziers or whatever like uh you see like torches are so sconces and like braziers um that once were uh obviously like held like cool torches and stuff now are just sort of filled with like earth and dirt uh that that provide that sort of um violet or lavender colored fungi uh illumination 
Uh, it's kind of like in this. It's very. It's a <laughs> scones. It's it's full of scones. Everybody. Uh, violet violet colored scones. Um, yeah. So sort of you kind of like see just this this mass of of like um, hunched over dirty little humanoids um, going about their daily business. Um, you see some of them like you know like eating eating like bones. Um, and like kind of like rummaging through trash piles looking for I guess just odds and ends of different things uh, You know like just just slices of life of goblin living right you see some arguing some sleeping some fighting some screwing um, some sharpening of weapons uh, More shouting more eating more fighting maybe even a little sewing and uh, Yeah, and then more sleeping uh, roughly, how many do we see? Like, is it? Oh, dozens? this is this is yeah. Oh no, this is a um. Look, this is like the size of a. Um, this is the size of a cathedral. So this, more than more than uh more than a few dozen, right? Maybe maybe three dozen, maybe four dozen. I mean, it's hard to tell, in the light and the shifting of moves and the gigantic like, um, let me be clear here. Um, in the back of this cathedral. It's basically like a dump, uh, just like this mound of garbage that they just kind of like grabbed and just keep there. Like literally, like like an actual like imagine like a dump truck just spewed its contents in the back, and they just push it all to the side, and they kind of like rummage through it when they need stuff, uh, and then yeah. and bring things back to their camp in the middle of this area. That's pretty much what you see, and that's certainly where the smell is coming from. Uh, you know, uh, there's. Looking around, like with the rubbish and things like that, it's it's basically it's kind of explains why a lot of this this dungeon has been kind of empty, um, like broken old furniture, armor, arms, uh, chest statues, you know, all those types of things. Maybe like painting frames, uh, that kind of stuff. It's all seemed to be like stashed in this room and being used for, um, you know, uh, various either like for food, uh, on different things or shelter or clothing. Or weapons. Hmm. All right, it's oh, not well cared for at all. Uh, Deckard, Deckard basically sort of turns towards um, Gilly and goes, "So you want to rush in and charge these fellows? Go ahead if you'd like." But are there any sort of like fighter fighters left? Is this or is this just basically old women and children and old men? Oh no, I mean there there's a few, but um, like I said like earlier on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep with that. That you kind of did take out like their main fighting force, right? There's a couple of people left, but they're not, you know, they're not the best. They're not the the elite. You know what I mean? No. No. So uh, you, I you think broke their back. Just looks at the yeah. and, and, and whispers like, let's just go back and discuss it, Bryson. Sounds good. Let's go. So, Grice, I have a plan. How? No. Okay. So we have this kobold, which was clearly their leader. How about we take his head and join the others, and then if there these goblins create any problems, we'll we can impress them by showing them the head of their leader. The dead. The dead bugbear. Oh, sorry, bugbear. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we've got his head. Yeah, we we have we can cut off his head. Did we? We didn't cut off his head yet, did we? You did. Oh, yeah. oh uh, that's how Grace killed him with a shield. Remember? Oh, yeah. We actually already cut off his head. So he's he's let's missing just take his head. <laughs> let's bring his head and. Uh... That, who's car? That. I mean, who's carrying the head? That that would be like a shield, right? You have to. That would be like the same as holding a shield, right? Or a weapon? I think uh, I think we left it there for the time being. We I know, but off. if you're if you're bringing the head to the room, I mean, you obviously don't that doesn't require a check or anything like that. But it's important to, to remember. It. Yeah, of oh, course we need. To yeah, carry. and uh, just keeping score at home, uh, Gilly, your lantern ran out. Yeah, I uh, I refill that. I think. Yeah. I lit a torch. I think you remember me saying that. Oh. Uh, no, like not I, with the other group, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't I need remember to, you I saying need that. I'm just going to make a quick little note here that Grice, you you have a torch. Yes. I, also, I need to yeah. light the lantern anyway because I'm in. We're in darkness over there. Yeah. Otherwise. So, um, also fans of uh, you know, in TV land, uh, in case this is your first time watching Torchbearer, uh, eventually I'll stop doing these recaps. I think, but it's still important to know in case you just drop by. 
Uh, Torchbearer has this sort of like countdown turn mechanic where um, if you're doing actions, um, you it, you know, it kind of abstracts time to being like one turn and whatever that means. Um, and when you do a turn, things happen. Um, when you do a turn, it usually represents a skill check of some kind. Um, your torches start going out. If you ever played Darkest Dungeon, it's kind of like when your torch goes down and your stress goes up a little bit, like just going through stuff. It's the grind. It's actually where tor the folks who designed Torchbearer, or uh, Darkest Dungeon, got their idea for this game. It's this sort of this wear and tear. Obviously, Torchbearer is not the first idea, uh, comp you know, game to come along with the idea of wear and tear of staying too far below ground, um, that kind of stuff, and just sort of like the stress building up as you delve and explore and try to um, adventure. But um, it's very much a sort of like this mechanical, almost board gamey like turn kind of phase of play. Um, so that's what's been going on. So they made a turn, so their torches just ran, or their lantern just ran out, and now we're kind of like making sure we can hold steady. So, yep. Anyways, continue. So, Grice, do you have an empty hand to carry the head, or should I? And Grice just holds up his hands. He's got his shield in one hand and torch in the other. Fair enough. Okay, so... Uh, you have an, uh, an empty one head slot. What? What? Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna wear its face as a mask. That's no way to get ahead in this party. <laughs> that would require oh, quite oh, a few oh. rolls uh, to skin it and that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah but no. I'm just gonna carry it in my hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just kind of leaking guts as you go. Hmm. Okay. So uh, yeah. So that's why I wanted to stay behind because I thought this would uh, take a, a, you know, we needed to cut it off still, but we didn't. So. At this point, do the others return to us or are we moving yeah. to meet them sort of halfway? No, we, we, we told you we'd be back. Right. So we're back in the kill room. And okay. um, what, think, news? Uh, what did you find? A couple of dozen of... Like, a couple of dozen? And... Yeah, but they're like old and useless. There's only maybe three or four properly, like proper fighty goblin types. It's We're like, talking women and children here. There's no need to take care of those. Look, those women and children, those children will grow up to be as mean as that, those fuckers that are lying over there. Yeah, so they'll kill a bunch of these other things. Who cares? We'll be long gone by then. I don't agree. Give them a fair shot in life. If they come back but strong enough to kill you, life. they deserve it. So what's the what's the plan of attack? What's the easiest what's the easiest we route? Just charge in and kill them all? No. Why? Why would we kill them? They haven't done us anything. I mean, their warriors did, but not them. You do know that they're goblins, right? Not elves or men or halflings or dwarves. Goblins. Even okay, if they evil, have evil little fuckers. Even if they have sentience, they're an abomination. I don't, I don't want them at our back as we descend further looking for... But they tried to get the dragon and dra this, this dragon is clearly evil, so you know they, they might be able to help us. Let's be pragmatic about this. We've got the head of their boss. We show up, throw that in amidst, say, we're your boss now. You guys can go attack the cobble, uh, cobbled camp. By the way, we've got one problem solved. I Exactly. I mean, we can scare them off with this head. We don't need to kill them all. We don't need to, to commit goblin, go, I don't know, genocide. Goblicide? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're already halfway there, right? We killed almost half of the force already. Yeah, but they, they didn't. They, they, the women and children did nothing wrong. They didn't attack Look, us. I'm, all, I'm all, all for just carrying that head and throwing it in there and telling them to attack the goblin, or the kobolds. But if any of them survive, we kill them. Look, Gilly, do you have a wife? Do you have no. children? No. Then you don't know what it is to lose them. Then you don't do you, know what it is to lose kids. Do you that card? Oh god, dude! Like we cut, we cut to like some like horrible experience in Deckard's life. <laughs> like he's like just, drowning, just like getting getting service right dwarven divorce papers. <laughs> like <laughs> if, if you if you did Deckard, then why are you here? If you did have a wife and kids, why are you here? Because I had a wife and kids. Just let's just leave it at that. 
Quick, quick, Gilly gets distracted so, just so easily. It's <laughs> a real life Deckard. <laughs> yes, Deckard looks exactly like that, in fact. Just 100% with <laughs> the t-shirt and all. Enough talking. I want to I wanna do this, however we do it. Because those unholy plants are still in the other room. And I'd like to get back to them. And then, and then maybe I can see the sunlight again. Look, those, fine, let's burn a couple of plants. There's no need to go out and kill women and children. All right. Um, like, out of, like, metagaming, like, who, what, what would we need to roll if we were to walk in there with a head and say, hi, I'm your boss now, go back those cold... <laughs> you can't ask that. But, that's that's but, against the spirit of the game. But also, we, we, why would we ask them to k attack the kobolds? They are sworn enemies. I mean, that yeah, is true. No, I know, but I mean... Are, are you asking this now back in character or are we out of character? Oh yeah, that's I true. I don't know. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. No, but would it be possible by, by doing like a... Like a, a, or, yeah. or, a or a oratory or something. What is it? Yeah, or, or... Oh God, what you call it? And the... Uh, with the way where we deal out the cards and do all the conflict, um, how, how it could about, be, it could be, or it could be a single roll. It depends on how how important it is to you guys. Yeah, how be. about yeah. we not worry about the feasibility and worry about whether it'd be cool to do or not? Well, if you wielded, cool. if you wielded the head of the chief in a uh, you know oratory conflict, I feel like you would get a significant die bonus if it was. A <laughs> yeah, right. That's all certainly right. a, an, a, a good weapon in an argument conflict to do as I say. I'm just gonna let all you guys right. know that. That's fair. All right, that's all I needed to. Do. I think yeah. Grice holds his torch aloft and says, "Come on, Arendelle, are we doing this?" But, and, but, and like starts leading the way, even though he doesn't really know the way. But are why? You, wait, are you leading? Are you leading the way to <laughs> okay. into the goblins or into the uh, the old chamber where? Um, so the go what's the goblins? All right. Uh, Decker just goes, "Oh, son of a," and just follows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, We're doing this apparently. Yep. So you, you, the door, the door swings open. Um, actually, in fact, the double doors swing open, and uh, with the light, um, you you hear like re like cries and rees as the um as the goblins kind of like scurry. Um, the like you know basically like the women and children goblins like. Rah! Rah! Um, you see some like taller goblins. Um, they're not like as tall as the bugbear. But they're significant. Um, you know, like, maybe, like, four of them or so. Um, they kind of, like, grab whatever's around. Uh, maybe, like, you know, one grabs, like, an arm of a statue. Um, one grabs a, uh, you know, like, like a basin, like a bowl, like a shield, um, as best they could. And uh, they kind of they kind of look at you guys, and they go, and they, they shout out in Goblin. Um... What do they say? Um, well, I think Grice just oh, okay. speaks yeah, up the moment do? he sees them reaching for for weapons. Um, yeah. like, Not so fast. Keep your hands where I can see them. Arendil. In common. Go them. Yeah, in, in common. <laughs> yeah. Grice well, they, is they, the goblin. Yeah. Um... Does Arendil like? So what did you say, Arendil? Do what? Um, Show them. Show them. Yeah, they uh, say they say like if you're gonna kill us, you have to get through. Like we're not gonna go easy, right? That's what they say. I think. Uh, I think Aaron will. Uh, like they know uh, what's up, but yeah, they're gonna be like, no, that's fine. We're gonna fight to the. We'll fight to the last person. Spoilers. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron uh, hold, holds up uh, holds up the the head of uh, Balsog and um, says, Ooh. There's... Yeah, you hear a lot of like murmurs, uh, in in Goblin. Um, we should just literally, you know what? Decker just shouts out, "There's your last person!" Oh, and they, they kind of like look at each other, uh, and they kind of look at look at you. They be like, "You guys are clearly strong." Yeah, yeah. I throw the um, I throw the head at their feet, and uh, I yell, "There's your fight!" Mm. I mean, they don't. They don't put no, down their weapons. Look at, and then I look right. at 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 Grice and Deckard like, what was what was your plan? <laughs> yeah. 
because Arendelle, just as just as Mandel is clearly confused. <laughs> I, I guess um, you know what Decker just sort of shouts out, uh, shouts out, tries to get a full thundering voice on, just goes, "Hear me, goblins! We are your leaders now." Do you have an intention here? Is this is this you trying to get a um, role? I think, uh, wait, is there a, a convinced conflict? Because there, there's I mean, a convinced, no intention. Yes. You know, there absolutely would, is a convinced conflict if that's what we're trying to engage in right now. If that's what you want to shoot for. Um, alternatively, if we want, we can make this a single role. It depends on how important this is. Um, well, I guess it depends. On, I and the GM should determine how important it is. What do you um, want? Like, what, what do we want to achieve no. here? Yeah, I, th I think basically what we want to. It depends, it depends on, on how intent. far we want to go. Because your in, yeah, uh, your intent can't be I want a conflict. Your intent is what are you trying to accomplish yeah. by by and saying we're in charge? Do you want them to listen to you? Do you want them to just cower and let you do whatever you want, um, etc. Like, right? Do you want them to throw down their weapons? Like, what are you what are you trying to get out of this when you're when you're saying this stuff? At the very least, I want them to sort of follow our command now. Um, do you think you know just yeah, for the rest of the game? Do you think we can get him as far? You know, should we push him to actually attack the kobolds? Well, I think that's we what should. You want. And that's what just you want. It depends on you. I think we should just intimidate them so that they're they're just cowering in a corner and they won't do anything well, else. Um, this would probably be like an ob four orator roll, but you're certainly getting two dice bonus advantage for um having the head of the leader. Mm. Now you know what. I, I, I'm thinking actually what would make far more sense for Deckard is since he was already arguing let's not attack them is to s intimidate them so they're just there cowering away so that Deckard can basically you know demonstrate to the others look they're useless nothing's going to come of this let's leave them behind and go yeah so you're trying to convince the crowd to listen to you and cower yeah that's definitely much, orator yeah. uh, orator okay um once again, uh, order, and I'm saying the obstacle given the size and you, you know, that kind of stuff. Probably four. I mean, trying to convince, you know, th three or four dozen goblins and hobgoblins to listen to you as a dwarf. Uh, That's about right. There's but only you also have the head of the the bugbear leaders, so I'm giving you two dice bonus just as an advantage because of the circumstances of this. Like that's a great so advantage. Manipulating. Yep. Yep. Mm. Um, you're not trying to trick them, though. Like you're trying to convince them. You're trying to convince a yeah. crowd, which is like the definition of orator. Yeah, but help. Uh, it's but a it suggested help for orator. You could help oh. with a lie, right? Yeah, you could certainly help yeah. with a lie. And I think, oh. I think Grice yeah. does like Grice speaks up, and he's like, "You <laughs> see, you see your slain leader here. He was a trifle. He was a walkover. We countless foes." larger and more fearsome than him have fallen be before us oh yeah um so so grover bomb makes a good point instead of just saying it's an ob4 um i'm going to actually make a uh, uh make this mm. a versus test just a group versus test versus a group versus test that sounds much better um yeah okay i'm sorry okay. So what, what were you saying alex i'm sorry i'm so sorry i was handling that that's fine the gist of it was that like we're really powerful you've messed with us you're gonna die um we've done tremendous things grice is being a bit fast and loose with the truth <laughs> um but you know he'll point them to like if you want death you can you might stand a chance of living if you fight the kobolds if you come after us there's no chance yeah um well and hmm. my intent my intent in this with this help that i'm giving was to use my boasting nature oh yeah hmm. that's certainly a good one nice um, the hobgoblins uh scoff and say well uh balsog cowered under the the might of uh of belak because he was not a true believer uh we believe in the outcast and we believe uh in his strength we already have we have a real leader in him with with Bilak out of the way uh we can we can become even Balsog. stronger or sorry uh, Balsog out of the way yeah definitely goblin zealots <laughs> so um they're like get out of your uh sap or you know sapling or something like that you know? <laughs> sapling <laughs> so like they're they're um, being yeah they're trying to um 
sort of... Uh, there's no intimidate skill, so I guess it's manipulate? Or, um... That's I not guess? A, that's not a skill either, isn't it? Pers it's persuade. persuade? It's persuade. Yeah. Persuade and manipulate. manipulate are both skills. Oh. Um, yeah. Then it's manipulate. They're certainly manipulating. So... Um, Gilly, presumably they Gilly doesn't. Right. Gilly doesn't join in. This is talky stuff. Thank you, Payne. I get up. Okay. I, uh, I would help, but I can't. I don't have any I, of those skills. <laughs> I, I guess Dick are just sort of, you know, uh, basically as the argument in in uh, um, just calls out, um, all your strongest warriors lie there dead. The strongest of you all lies here, dead. We've killed them all at the same time. What do you think you're going to do? I think um, I think Arendelle um, well joins with. Uh, I think can I join with Persuader even though it's not in the in the list by, um, by you know, but with his move with the head, um, uh, which is obviously influenced. Uh, I'm already giving you two dice for for the head. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Yeah. Well, that's that. Um, that's how. That's Arendelle a circumstantial joined. advantage here. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm no, not giving any die. I'm not helping with the yeah. test. No, the goblins look at you and you're like, uh, and just mention like, look, like you know, no, you guys must be tired and and hungry from from fighting, uh, yep. you know, our, our best now. You know, you won't you won't last under our might. You know, we might be the strongest fighters, but we have the numbers, essentially, right? And even if you kill us, then Belak will get you. They're trying to bully you away. Um, <laughs> so, um, hungry, yeah, hungry this for is killing. Kind of, this is actually part of the hobgoblin nature is bullying. So um, I'm just going to use I'm using I've been using that essentially to be like you know, yeah you you think you're so tough yeah well, we're even more tough our our human our human dad can beat up your human dad, right? <laughs> you know, you're, you guys yeah you you guys are you guys are in no shape to fight. All right, how many dice are you rolling, Eric? Oh, uh, I'm rolling seven. What? Uh, so the first, their base nature is three, and then there's four helping. So this is just a group versus. Okay. Um, Ob is zero because it's the versus. You can always escalate. I got four successes here. Why? Why are you rolling okay. nature? Because it's because a hobgoblin it's nature. I'm sorry, I said manipulate test, but it's actually um, it's their nature to um. But these bully. are goblins, right? No, they're hobgoblins. Yeah, the, the strong ones were hobgoblins. Oh, they? I mean, the other ones were. Yeah, I, I essentially gave them three dice. So, um, their nature is three. Um, the three other hobgoblins are helping them, and then essentially the other goblins uh, effectively are at one extra die. It, okay. Is my logic so, here? Yeah. If only I could pump my nature into this. Avenging a grudge, man. It's it's, it's literally the ace in the hole of every yeah. dwarf and adventurer. That's why I'm suddenly thinking, how can I, how can I turn this to avenging a grudge? Or just spend that persona and get the dice. Like, just do yeah. it. Or tap your nature and just do it. I think I'm just going to tap nature, basically. That's to, why to we're still it. here, to, to spend persona and fate, Paolo, remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're still here. What is best in life? To spend the persona, to get the fate. <laughs> to get the lamentation of the goblins. Okay. So Gilly wasn't helping, Grice is helping, and uh, Arendelle is helping. No, or Arendelle's, Arendelle's not helping specifically. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, help. Two yeah. Two die for the head. I, I gave okay. you two already. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy, dwarf. Hey, I'm a dwarf. Okay. Um, so I am going to do an. Uh, I'm going to call on the orator for one. Um, now that means that we have. Two dice that we get from the heads. There's one extra die that I get from Grice helping. I am absolutely going to um, tax uh, nature, um, which is going to give me five extra, which gives me a total of eight extra dice. Did you add the two for the head? Uh, yeah, okay. that's two, one, and five. Got it. Yes. Okay. You add some traits if you if you yeah. feel it's so any any. <laughs> No, nah, it's it's uh, that's the thing. Um, the tra they could work in here, but I just don't see them relevant. Like I could twist it to a venture grudge or use my nature or just use jaded, but it, it doesn't make sense. You're already tapping your persona though, so like you really couldn't. Anyways, you're already kind of using that 
resource, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, making sure I spend that. Let's uh, give it a go. Uh, oh, obstacle will be four, obviously. Submit. Nice. No. Oh, yes. Uh, Ooh, awesome. Awesome. Hold on. Level up. I, w I just want to say, I want to spend that fate as well. I want to get this extra in there. Uh, you this actually get to roll 3d6. Exploding. What? You got three here. sixes in that roll there. This is not Good enough roll. humiliation. I want to crush them. Yeah. Perfectly uh, reasonable with that. That's really good. Over four, exclamation mark for the explosion. Let's get this done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so you got to spend the fate point. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut to our break, and then we're going to return and see what it's like. Um, what? Have you guys convinced them? Yeah. <laughs> yup. That's called a cliffhanger. So we'll uh, be back in five minutes, everybody. All right. Ay, 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 ay.